for this next talk, we will be having Rafael Gomez. Um, so Rafael has been doing a lot in the last 12 years that he's been in development. So I know if like it's been like five years now that he's been sharing a lot of his publicly um, developed, well, he, he did it privately, but then he shared it publicly, these tools that he's done for optimization to the community. And now he's focusing on creating more tools and he will be doing a talk today on optimizing um, your development process. Um, so Raphael, I know you're, you're living in one of my favorite places at the minute. So do you want to tell the audience where you're based? Yes, sure. Yeah, I'm based in Canada, in Quebec. In, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he, he's living in Canada. And, and believe it or not, it's 8 a.m. in the morning. So he had to get up extra early this morning to make sure he's here <laughs> and doing this talk. And um, he's been lovely enough to tell me that he's originally from Brazil as well, which is another one of these countries that I admire and love about. So we're going to have a really good talk and he will be sharing with us a lot of insight, people. So stay tuned. Over to you, Raphael. Okay, thank you very much. And yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my uh, my presentation today, uh, in my presentation, we'll be talking about optimizing your development process. So uh, I will be sharing about some insights that I had since the beginning of my career and the process that I that I developed during the years, and uh, mainly the the how I usually detect the, the main points that must be optimized in the process, not just to me. In the beginning, it was more to me, to my process, but after that, to, to the entire team as well, as soon as a, a solution is validated. So yes, uh, we can move to the next slide. Uh, well, uh, my, as I said, my name is Rafael. Uh, I'm a technology director at Le Cid, a company based here in Quebec, Montreal. And uh, I was uh, I received the, the title of Magento Master in 2018 by Adobe Magento. And uh, at two time, I received two times the Innovation Lab Award as well. And uh, I love to contribute to open source projects. So when I see some solution that can uh, bring optimization, bring uh, uh, a, a useful uh, thing for the daily basis or to help developers in the, their, their daily basis routine. So uh, I'm glad to share and to uh, engage with tools that we use in the community as well. So uh, that's what I uh, mo most like to, to do. And yeah, so in this presentation, the, I prepared this summary, so we know what we're going to discuss. So we, first of all, I think the, the most important thing is to know about the frequent problems. So that's how I usually start to detect. But before, it was not so clear to me how to see this in a structure. So in, in 10 years ago, in eight years ago, I didn't see as a structure. But nowadays, it's much more clear. In, in, so there's a, a step. To, that to detect an attack. So it's a plan of attack to optimize your process. And you can detect different kind of uh, small things and uh, weaknesses in the process that can be optimized, even if it's just in your own process as a developer or in your team as a lead developer. So uh, the frequent problems is the first topic. The second is improvements. So as soon as you have the problems that you know already, you detect it, then it's visible to you. You already have them uh, pointed out in, in, in something to look and really think about it. Then you can uh, also think about the improvement that, that it can bring to your team. So to evaluate, if uh, the, does it worth to make some time to solve these or no, or how the solution will be applied if the, it's something that will bring uh, uh, very good optimization to justify the efforts that you're going to put on it, or it's something that will be replaced in the future and then it doesn't make so much sense to optimize now uh, with a long-term solution, just a short-term solution. So uh, the improvements is good, very good to know as well, what will be in, uh, the, the end results, the output. And number three, in the find validating opportunities. So this is also after you have the parameters, it's like Google Analytics. You have the data, but you need to analyze the data and make uh, the, the, the clever decision uh, with the data that you have in hands. So 
uh, the third point. And the fourth point is about the tools, uh, some tools that I share publicly. And uh, if you don't have any tools to use today, this tool probably will help you a lot. So uh, yes, and uh, I will, in all these steps, I will share the, the steps that I use to develop these tools. And now these tools are public and open source. So it's easy to use as well. And we can move forward to the next slide. So number one, frequent problems. So in the frequent problems, as I, uh, I was detecting that in most of the companies that I, that I worked or helped, uh, I saw, or even developers like freelance developers or developers not even working with Magento, but working with different platforms, different systems, they, the most common thing is ignoring the patterns in the process. So sometimes it's something that happens every day and we don't detect it then because uh, we are not focused to, to detect these patterns. But as soon as we focus on to detect patterns, then uh, the process grows with it. So the most repetitive ones that are detected in most of the teams, probably is in our team as well, as the deploys, it happened a lot. And every time, every uh, in most of the companies, every time and every developer depl deploying in a different way. So deploy is something repetitive and very impactful for the health of the project for even tests, not health and production, but in test environments, but it's something that requires a certain level of effort by developers to deploy the tests, make sure it's precise and uh, must be very assertive and optimized since it's uh, running every time. And also local in many projects and local setup as well, because as soon as we uh, have a new project, we receive a new, a uh, new project work, or we wanted to work on a new project, let's say uh, we want to collaborate with the, uh, the core of Magento, or we wanted to, to test and validate the possibilities in the project to propose to a client. Uh, this local setup must be very fast, not spend like uh, one day, or there are, there are cases that it must prepare even uh, the, the basis, so we, two days. So it was taking a long time to, to the developers in the teams that I worked or to, um, to the developers that I helped to detect this. Uh, it was taking a long time, so they didn't thought that it would be optimized and how they could optimize since it's something uh, that they were used to, to have as a long process to, to have increasing the cost, increasing the, the maintainability of the project and how scalable it can be applied to a team. Because if you have uh, two developers, that's okay. But if you have 100 developers, 300 developers, then it became a problem when you needed to, to uh, switch teams or allocate the, the developer that have some speciality in one team or another. So local setup was an issue as well in most of the teams. And um, shared knowledge as well, because sometimes we, uh, have the solution for ooh, with one developer or another developer to one specific issue that this developer specifically already faced, but uh, not through the entire team. So how we could share the knowledge between all of them and how we could uh, make the communication clear between them without a lot of meetings. Uh, we all know that developers don't like to be in the meetings and, and like more to be coding. So uh, how to make sure we share knowledge in a fun way it would be a lot of meetings to, to share it. So this is the topic number one about the issues. Second is the repetitive steps every time. So they get, as I said, they get used to, to have this step. So it was harder to detect it. But as soon as you look with a different point of view, you can see it. So it's good that sometimes it's like playing chess and when you needed to uh, stand up and go around the, the uh, the, the game and seeing a different point of view. So this is uh, the same kind of strategy. And uh, most of the time, who is inside of the process think it's more secure because they are used to have this process. So the change is, is something uh, scary to them to, to do this, the change in the process. But even if it, it's clearly more effective, so it's uh, detecting it, we can treat it. So. Uh, this is the point number uh, inside of the point number two, and also training people to do machine work. This was something that I saw in many companies that they were training 
people to go and do a sequence of comments every time and just change some variables uh, or some uh, small thing, but every time that they have a new employee and they wanted to have the process executed every day or every week, they do, uh, they do trainings to teach them how to do the machine work instead of doing a, a, the, creating the script to let the machine do the work and train developers to thinking strategically about the code, about how to implement and solve more problems that will bring more value to clients. So this is the number two. Also number three, is smart and resilient code. It means that uh, the code sometimes is made uh, very fast to solve some problems, but there are two main verticals. There is the uh, short-term solution, long-term solution, medium long-term solution. So the short-term solution is something like a hotfix that must be applied as soon as possible. Yes, this, uh, there are many situations like that that might happen uh, when you have a legacy code, then uh, you need you are not prepared to solve some issues that uh, was um, brought by the, the, the legacy code. But anyways, we have to have a long-term plan when apply the hotfix. And to have a, a smart code and resilient code, will help you to maintain this, this, this code that you are uh, building. So as we can see many, many modules that we see the um, GitHub, for example, or Magenta Marketplace, we have many options in the admin panel that can control it, but not just the basic options, but advanced option as well. So just because we are developers, we don't need to change everything in the code. We could have some logic applying the admin panel. There are some modules that bring the uh, rejects the rejects is the, the it's a pattern that we can um, detect patterns actually it's a rule that we can detect patterns and apply something so there are some advanced uh, configurations that we can do directly via admin panel via our module to let our code our module more smart and resilient uh, that we could avoid in this step we could avoid doing this uh, automate we could avoid deploys we could avoid downtime we could avoid change code and since the code will be the same, but the logic applied will be a little bit different to, to get new patterns. So detecting this when the code is a code that must be changed completely in the, uh, just in the code via deploys or via admin panel is something very important as well. It was uh, one of the uh, biggest issues, the third one. And it must be easy to change. The code must uh, predict changes and not invent, reinvented the world. So use the maximum of Magento native functionalities. Use internal modules as well. We have uh, many modules uh, that are internal to specific to clients to, uh, to have a specific uh, 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 different solutions internally as well. So all these patterns must be, uh, all, this, uh, the, all this code must follow the same pattern that is easy to install uh, it must be plug and play. So is it to install, is it to configure, and is it to start to use? So it reduces the complexity to developers and also reduces the complexity to clients. That sometimes has, uh, the, the client has a, a technical team inside of the company and they can do also some advanced, techno, uh, advanced uh, options in the technology that we create. So this is a good approach. Check the symptoms it also, is also very important sometimes we, we, there's some issue that happened, but the, I saw that the, the development teams, they uh, solved the issue, but they didn't apply something. Why it happened, uh, something that could predict this in the future. So why it happened, um, what was the symptoms before it happened? So the, you had a downtime, why uh, you had it? So you had it because of the, the users was increasing, the server was, uh, uh, full of uh, logs or what happened in this case. So sometimes the issue was growing and it's uh, good to detect these patterns when it's happening, when the symptoms are start to appear and to start to monitor this, not just in one project, but then we can replicate in other projects. So uh, for example, check the server capacity, make sure that your Magento Cloud is not uh, full of files that are not required to the project or um, if the client uploads on many files from FTP that start to, to use a lot of um, the hard drive uh, or memory as well, based on some file execution, import. So this is something to detect. And as soon as you solve the issue, see the symptoms, see the graphics about the history until at this point, 
and prepare to the next uh, 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 to predict this in the future. Well, um, a strategic a strategic analysis is also an issue because sometimes I saw when we when we have the the uh, usually in the development team when you have the the code done, but the code is done without uh, usually a documentation in the beginning or uh, something that would share with the team the knowledge about what, what you are doing, what is the action plan. This also sometimes is an issue because uh, then if you needed to uh, move the approach or do some extra decision after six months of the implementation is made, then it's uh, hard to detect or even when the developer change a company and then you have another one, the strategic analysis that I did personally uh, was I was documenting in two different steps. So I documenting first an uh, overview about the situation. So what uh, the, for example, destination about how to apply the solution, the providing a, overview, a general overview about the situation, saying that what I saw in the, in the monetary reports. And then I was reporting more about what could bring of complexity to the project in the future in more advanced topics. So it was easy to detect. In the beginning, it was hard to report many data like this, but then uh, I would start to set in topics. So say in advanced level, in basic level overview. So then it, will, uh, it made easy the, the way that the project manager shared with the client, the report, and also understand the issue. So the same report could be shared between the team because it was precise and every time following the same pattern make it easy to be replicated. So every time that I was checking something, I already did the print screens to the strategic analysis and report and prepare. So it was, it became easier and easier. So this is also usually a, a favor when we just report like it's done or report just that, uh, uh, the time that the implementation, but not the impact that it's gonna have because sometimes the request is made by someone that is not technical and you knowing what is the, the, what could be wrong, what happened, what are the road, possible roadblocks, it's good to, to share as well. And it can optimize your own work in the future. So the improvements. With it, we have some improvements. So we have optimizations. We have, we have more quality for sure with the, the optimizations through the years and the companies. And we have more strategical tasks. So as soon as we start to have some of, uh, training the team about the, the, the machine work. We started to do some strategical tasks about what the client really need, if it, it matched with the, the customer requirement, and also what their feature, what are their feature goals. So we started to match the, the development, the, the technology that we developed with the, the client needs. So it was very good. And also to create fun tools to the team. So then, the team will be able to create something that is unique to the business, to the company, to the agency, to the uh, to offer to the clients, like modules, unique modules, unique solutions. And it was fun to maintain in, internally. So the team was engaged with the, the solution, was uh, created and, and very uh, had to have their own products, like uh, having their own child and uh, discussing about it, the future of it and improving the quality. And the same solution, same module, the same uh, uh, technology was applied to many projects. So the optimization was very good and the improvement of quality was uh, amazing. Then uh, second benefit was the turn of process, process in products. So as soon as, as you have a process consolidated, you look in the process, you know the variables, you know how uh, it must be in, in some projects or in other projects with some variations. We consolidate this in, in products. So that's why in the teams that I worked, usually we get the most used modules transformed in one company module. And then this is the, the main solution. If it's not in the market already, it's something unique. It's something that the, just the company has. And it can be consolidated, not just in knowledge in the developers might to every time uh, get from one place, but uh, or create or do the adaptation. But it's one solution that is adapted via admin panel. It's something that uh, with some parameters you set the how it must be. 
So it's a resi uh, the, there's a resilience approach in the, in the, the technology. And also the, uh, when you have something like this, a uh, kind of a uh, way to, to a tool, a uh, tool that you, developers can use easily, it also improves the developer experience, the DX. The, the DX is a developer experience, like we have the customer experience, we have the DX developer experience. So it must be easy to developers in the team start to use as well. Not every time you learn uh, 10 steps, not to do the manual work, but to repeat the, the tool that you created. So it doesn't make sense. So it must be something that is easy also to apply. So it's like, for example, uh, you have some tools, uh, you have, for example, Docker today, Docker we can use, but uh, no, many developers that use Docker don't know about, for example, how the virtualization works in Mac or Linux, but they use uh, Docker and it, it helps a lot to, to work with Magento. So this is the kind of thing and the approach that it must be. It must be not a completely black box that you don't know what is inside of it. You know the input and output, but you know also how to use it. You know what is happening because it's open source or internal, even all internal, but it's open. But you can see easily how to use it, like with just a help command or instruction, basic instructions, you can easily use the tool and the tool adapt itself with some variables, or with some parameters. And it must be ready to use and it will reduce a lot the learn curve, learning curve. So the focus on quality and innovation was amazing as well. It's something that uh, when you have something consolidated, you know what you're looking at. So you can have extra time to dedicate into efficiency and putting time in efficiency since you have a product to grow. This is uh, one of the things that make more fun the, 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 the work for developers, uh, as we know. So instead of doing the, the many times some tasks or repetitive tasks that uh, is, uh, is not every time the same thing. When you grow the process, the product that is acute something, then it's uh, better to the quality. It's better to 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 how you're gonna focus in the quality of this process and product at the same time, and how you bring innovation to the market. So since you create this, it's probably something that is unique. That's something that you can uh, bring as, as something new to your company and to your process and to your team, if it's something that you are doing yourself to bring to the team as a validated solution. And the benefits to, to the team, it's a benefit to the team and clients as well. Not just to our team, but the effectivity will be reflected in your projects and in the quality of uh, you're gonna deliver to clients. And uh, then it will be easier to identify weak points because you already will know what you're looking, what, what are the, the consolidated process or products that you created, how you make the, the knowledge that sometimes it's just with your senior developers in some specific process already predefined and uh, you have more clarity to, to know the, the weak points with it. Well, and it's amazing to help the community and your team with something that you created, with something new, with uh, innovation, with uh, uh, something that brings something to them that they didn't think before and or s s they didn't see as a possibility, but uh, it, it, the, it's very, uh, uh, when you have some solution like this, it's um, amazing. And so frequent problems. So you see the solution applied every day. Uh, it's uh, very good to, to, to the engagement, uh, how you're going to engage more developers with to solve many problems with one shot. So you solve um, many problems with uh, some package of solutions. It's very good. And also uh, you can receive collaborations and feedbacks. So not just feedbacks with the, the, your team, but also you can share with the community in case you wanted to share the solution and uh, as open source. And uh, you receive pull requests, you receive collaboration from different teams across the globe that uh, are using a different scope. So you improve the, how your tool is gonna, how is gonna be the behavior of your tool with different projects without even have to face these problems. So, which is very good, help and many people at the same time. So identifying and validating opportunities at top number three. And I, I think it's most, most about the process and optimization together. This make efficiency. And uh, this is um, my main goal. And every time that I think about, I see a repetitive process in many uh, in, in projects or in 
the same solution or different approaches, in the, in, but the, uh, the same output. So this is how we align is with process and optimization we, and we bring efficiency to the, to the and, and quality. So uh, we have also here that in, in, the, in this analysis, we have the critical analysis of repetitive process. So it means that we have to check what is the most repetitive, as I mentioned, the deploy sometimes the most repetitive one, and what are the easiest thing to apply. So you as a um, developer in a team, you can apply easily in your repetitive process, or in your common task, and you can, uh, if you can do it locally, or for example, optimize how you execute a script with uh, a script of optimization, or how you execute comments with some snippets already pre-created, this is the first step. This is how you start to create something. I usually use my uh, notes, Apple Notes, to, to have uh, what I execute every time, or just a note to, uh, to look at it, to see what is the repet repetitive process, like a documentation, then planning, how you're gonna do it. Like I do some research about, is there some tool that could solve this problem? Because uh, this is something very repetitive, so it must be already being solved by some kind of tool. Planning, modularity. So is it something that we're gonna be a huge solution with many variables or a small uh, tool, a small snippet, a small solution that is gonna solve one specific problem? So how modular is gonna be? The reliability. So how, the, how easy it will be to replicate, how easy it will be to combine with different approaches, different scenarios and different projects. Uh, avoid hard coding. So as I said, the smart code is very important. So as soon as you have something that can be easy uh, to manipulate and very resilient as well, yeah, you, you have more safety to deploy ones and adapt it. Even when you start to have just a enable disable button, this is the first step. Most of the modules created usually don't have it, uh, but uh, it's a, a good approach because in case you need to enable it, you don't need it to deploy again. So this is the first and basic thing, but then you can start to increase the options and not make a lot of options, but at least the essential ones in an advanced tab that you can control it and understand the limitation as well, because then you know how to stop one specific tool and probably create another one or just have uh, one specific tool to one specific problem. And uh, in, in case you need something else, probably sometimes not create tools every time, but adapting how you're going to use the manual process and the, the uh, automated process. And uh, I every time do the proof of concept. So I use my let's say, personal blog, uh, some concept to check the, how the tool will, is going to uh, be applied, if it's something valuable, if it's something that is going to bring some value for the, pro the current process or no. So you have the idea, you prove the concept and uh, it's, uh, or in an internal project or in a personal project and do a small validation. Also, the, you do the prototype of it. So instead of UI UX, I do the DX, so developer experience, it's gonna be documented like that. And I will have more examples here in these slides, but I do the DX and then you have the minimal variable product to uh, bring to the team and to suggest as a, a process to follow. So, uh, I usually do notes during the execution, test locally, I apply in small projects, automate it more, and I set up in more projects. So then uh, we have this pattern. And when you turn it in an internal project, as I said, you have a, a, it's good to have a test plan. It's good to show to them the, the benefits. So you sell the idea to your team and show what is the benefit of it. Then the team share with you the if there's already some tools with do the same thing or how to use one or another tool. And uh, it's good to, to, usually we have internal discussions. So we, with internal discussions with the team, we can discuss the possibilities of solving one problem and see if there's one tool even before we start to create some automation. And also this kind of training that we're gonna provide, we engage the team with one specific solution uh, that you're gonna bring to the team or that you're gonna create. And then you have to decide if you're gonna share or sell it. So in case you want to have an internal product, 
like module integration SaaS, then it's going to be a product for, for the company. It's going to be maintained by the company. So it's a different approach and we'll bring something different to, to the, the marketing and to the company that we work, or if it's going to be an open source, a small project. So it's going to be a, a, a company, uh, uh, open source project or a personal open source project. It depends on how and when you create it. And, uh, but anyways, we have to decide this. And this is one of the points of evaluation. Is it something specific to the company? Is it something like a new module to uh, Magento specifically, but open source and not something specifically applied to clients? So you can check this and decide it. And some tools. So one of, one of the tools that I created so that I personally saw this issue, one of the first tools that I shared publicly was to solve this problem. So when we have many comments to execute, usually I noticed that the, the pattern issue that happened was uh, developers usually in my team, they forgot the comments to be executed or they, uh, that there are some specific comments to specific things created to some specific projects. So usually how to know this when you have like a 24 seven support to solve some specific uh, customization issue or something that the client requested. How to remember every time that one specific project in a hundred project must have one specific comment to execute every time they deploy. So this is this one was one of the issues. Also repetitive process every time, even when remember it's a repetitive process, you running unnecessary comments sometimes. So taking more time off downtime. Uh, developers run it differently, so different order. Sometimes it in, impacts the project, sometimes no. So it was an issue. Uh, it was, I mean, like eight years ago, uh, when, yeah, five, five years ago, more or less, then I, I started to attack when I created a tool to solve this and the long downtime as well. So until we execute other comments, does it need it to be, to have the downtime or not? So it was an evaluation about it. And it was harder to roll back. So even when the solution was applied, deploy everything, but what about to roll back in case it's needed? Because you have to have a rollback plan. And most of the time, the developers struggled with to have this in, in the team that are worked and to, to handle with it, we, we created it too. And also it was a, a expensive pipelines because all the cons was executed by the pipelines. Sometimes it's not about the pipelines, the developer must do the deploy manually. So it was expensive to have all their comments in, in some pipelines. A code snippet basically that we created, we created a pattern, like you saw, these are the comments and share with everyone. So it was applied in one day, so the same day, it was fast to execute, everyone followed the same pattern, it was consistent, but it was not fast, it moved, it was not, uh, it was not developer friendly, and also not uh, resilient and not integrated. So every time same process, but it wasn't uh, not what was expected. Then we had a kind of deploy command automated via pipeline that it's public. You can access this. So uh, I don't. Uh, this is the same command I shared it recently, but uh, it was a command from years ago. So we don't use this anymore. Uh, or I don't use in, in different projects, but it's uh, basically common that we start with like a major deploy and it's my, it is in my Git, Gist, in my GitHub. And it was a step-by-step -step following the process and checking the language of the project, check some variables, like for example, the, uh, if environment is in production mode or no, and doing the execution based on that. So it was resilient, it was fast as well, it was not that much uh, developer friendly uh, code, but it worked in the beginning and was increasing and fixing the weak points in the process. Then we had the deploy recipe because uh, we saw the deployer, so we saw that it would solve problem. We saw some solution in the market, but it didn't solve all the problems that we had. So it was easy to deploy. You can deploy in your local machine to any server, staging production. You can let the pipelines replicate the same code. It warn the Slack channel, so then you, you know when a deploy is happening. You can warm up the cache if it's required. You can uh, do custom comments in PHP, which is very good to a PHP team to work, instead of using like tools in Ruby, Node. And so it was the 
solution that we saw and we bought from uh, we uh, brought from the market. And then uh, in, in my personal time, I said we could improve it more. So then I created my own recipe and with some specific comments that help me in, in my daily routines that could help me to, to have some extra comments. And then it, it became the, the pattern the team to, to work with it because it was bringing even more comments than the, the usual comments. It's my, it is my GitHub if you want to, to start to use it and see how it works. The comments basically that I implemented was the comment to flush the cache if it required in the stage environment, or for example, to compile the store just specifically to compile or to get a backup of the database without going to the server, get a backup, clean up the, the database and download your machine. With one comment, I specified the environment and I just wait and the comment, my SQL file is ready to import my local machine. So it was a huge optimization in one process of uh, doing a validation. So every time that I have to validate my environment, make sure it's equal to station production, make sure I'm going to test the same kind of situation and uh, to, to propose a solution with the maximum optimization that I can bring, it's better. Then uh, I, uh, I can spend more time actually doing this uh, strategy uh, analysis, so th which is very good. Then uh, I have also checked the logs. So if some, I have some report instead of checking what is the access, going to nodes. No, it's already saved in one configuration file. And with Magento log uh, exception, I can see the exceptions in, 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 with one con from any environment. So I can set the default environment as production or station. I can easily check with one comment what is happening in the logs. Uh, the same thing for media folder or also to do extra customizations like this one, Magento WildPixel, WildPixel.js, which compile the, the file from one specific uh, theme, or up cache flush and red flush to, to flush the cache directly in the server to one specific uh, server command. About server command, I created one recipe as well, just to make Mojo when I start to, to use it some years ago. Uh, I created my own recipe to Mage module. So I had control of some CLI cones that they, they have internally in, in the project. Some developers forgot what is the command or go directly in the panel. So I automated it. And then we have the comments directly from uh, the local machine. So with the command DAP, which is uh, the, from deployer, then with this actual recipe installed, we could use MM, Mage module, and then we could use like cloud front uh, clear and clean the, the CDN automatically with one common local machine just specifying the environment. So one extra customization today, we have like a thousand dollars. It's in version one yet, but it's very mature. So it's a, so a solution that solved the problem easily, quickly. Hi, hey, Rafael. Um, thank you so much. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's one of them things where we, um, the, I guess this talk could go on for quite a while, people. And I think there's so many questions that people have been asking you. I think you would appreciate it if you could um, probably spend some time in the chat and actually um, speak and actually just reply back to some of those questions that they've been asking. It's, it, it's been a fantastic time. It's been a pleasure to have you. Um, unfortunately, we overran a little bit for that one. <laughs>